Well, Dean, we'll start with congratulations to you because the heartiest congratulations on that marvellous run at the weekend. It, uh, not alone did you break the record again, which was broken a uh, couple of weeks back, maybe six weeks back. You shattered it, actually. A record I held myself for 52 years at one point. So we'll shake your hand and, and say congratulations on that. Can you give us an idea just how that event uh, in, you know, how, how, what happened um, through the laps as, as uh, the race progressed? Yeah, so, from the start, I got a very good start to the point where I was third behind the pacer. And uh, so, from the whole going around the circle, I thought I'd be getting dizzy by lap 25. But uh, I just somehow stayed in focus. And even when I was looking back during the race, the commentary were saying that I was looked like I was doing a tempo. So that just showed I was so focused on trying to not only beat the record, but also to run a quick time and to say it like with the pacer and the pack, try not to get dropped or whatever. And uh, so when the pack started to split up a lot, uh, I thought um, I was still up the front feeling comfortable. So I was like, okay, I might as well to push on and try to go for the record and uh, I and when I went around the uh, I continued to plow on and tried to try to go back onto the pace we were set at uh, 20 minutes and 45 seconds but uh, it was just a little bit too far out of my control to get so I tried to keep it at 70s and 69 seconds per lap which I believe I did very well and then not realizing who was behind me or who was catching up to me or where everyone else was until the last 350 meters when the Italian or the guy who came second came up behind me and started sprinting for a home. So when he came up, it was a race. It became yeah. a race again. And I nearly smiled to myself again. Really? And you finished with something like a 62 second last lap. That, yeah. that, was, that was speed. Yeah, 62 for the last 400 and after coming off a 70 seconds second last lap. So I don't know where I got that speed from, but I did. Proud day, Jerry, yeah? Oh, absolutely. Very proud day. And it's, it's just one proud day of many over the years. So the, the great had like to, to make it look so easy. And when did you first see the, that? the talent emerging from, from Dean and his brother? I would say almost from the start, I think it was maybe under 10, Dean actually ran the Clare B's back in Cooler Clare. And uh, that day, he, I think he, he fell on the start line. For the first couple of years, he had lost, probably getting off the start line, he'd yeah. slip or trip over something or whatever. And uh, he came from maybe second or third last position all the way up to actually win the Clare Bees that year. And uh, he's never looked back since really, he's kept going. And uh, the fact then that you have Dylan there as well, who's actually the older brother, uh, they kind of push each other all the time in the odds head. And even during COVID, it was easy for them to go out to their runs and to go out together and to the odds head, somebody like And of course, that marvellous day at the European Cross Country Championships in Dublin, uh, that was a big, big day as well. Can you just take us back to that a little bit, your experience? Uh, I was small and nervous going into it uh, as it was a home venue and I won't say we were favourites now but uh, we wanted to do well, me and the team wanted to do well from the home crowd and we did very well, like we didn't know where we were coming in the team position until we saw the team standings at the end and I say it was from the crowd as well that dro drove us home to come second and only by a point from first. That must have been really exuberant, like, for, but between you all that day, like uh, one of these days that everything falls into place. Yeah, it was in fairness. So. And tell us a little bit about your coach, Pat Hogan. What, what difference does he make as a, as a mentor and a coach? Well, Pat knows everything. Like uh, if I was injured this week, he'll completely redo my training program for next week and until I got back fit again or 100% to go at my normal weeks. So uh, it's just the fact that he knows a lot and 
it's like he's lived through it and he's been doing it for so long. He's just so good at it, naturally good at it now. So he's a vital cog in the in the whole yeah. setup as well at the club and particularly for yourself and your brother as well. Yes. And plans for the rest of the season, anything uh, coming up that you're, you're particularly focused on? Well, I have my leaving cert first. Yes. But after the leaving cert, I'll be hopefully running in the UCC or the race down in Cork. And whatever, I don't know what event now, but we'll see when closer to the time what event to do. And then hopefully it'll be on to the world in Columbia in August. So a lot, of, a lot ahead, and uh, I'm sure the, the uh, nutrition at home and the support, parental support as well, a vital uh, part of the, the whole setup as well. Yeah, so you'll be talking to people like John, they'll be saying, oh, I, I, I told them about when Dean got off the plane yesterday, he went for a run after and people said, you were trying to kill him. So people don't realize this is what you have to do if you want to get to the top level, you know, you have to train for five, six, seven days a week, you have to do your physio. So, so it isn't just one person, there is a big group of people in the background, the physio, the strength and conditioning, the, the, all these people, so they, they all have, so they're all, as you said, they're like Pat is the main cog in the wheel, so these are all other cogs, so and they, they all fit together nicely. So. so you have a good crew around you? Yeah. And uh, will you look towards America, do you think, after the, the, the end of the year, or have you decided yet? Uh, I have not decided as of yet, but We'll see. See how she goes. Yeah. Olympics, I'm sure, is a big ambition. Ah, yeah. It yeah. Will, will be. Good. That's a nice note to finish on. Yeah. Well, it's been great to be at the track club to see you in action. And uh, I, for one, got really, really excited when I heard what you ran. 28, was it 28.57? Yes. Marvellous, marvellous for a young man. Your age now is? 18. And when will you be 19? July. July. Well, now that would be a big celebration for a birthday with a record to hang on there as well. So thanks again to father and son and uh, to Winners Track Club as well. It's been absolutely marvellous to be here. Thanks for coming, obviously. <laughs>